I'm Mr. Berg and my car runs on vegetable oil. So it's a diesel engine, it does a, it's different than a gas engine, it doesn't have a spark plug. So it just ignites with, uh, when the piston pushes the, the fuel to compress and explode. And so originally when this guy named Rudolf Diesel made the engine, he made it to run on peanut oil. And then it, they found this uh, gas distillation byproduct called, that they ended up calling diesel because it could run in the engine. And so then it's been run on petroleum diesel for however long, you know, nearly a hundred years probably. Um, but it's always been able to run this vegetable oil stuff, peanut oil or soybean oil or canola oil, or any other oil you like, um, but it just hasn't been done because of the availability of fossil fuel diesel. I had a friend who did it and he get, ended up in the, in the newspaper. So he bought a brand new Jetta and cut the fuel lines, which voided his warranty on his brand new car. Um, and he like got the oil from George Fox. And so they like wrote the whole thing up in like the George Fox newspaper and the Newberg newspaper where I live. And then I had another friend convert his old Mercedes to do it. And so then I started looking around for an old Mercedes so that I could do this because I was spending like $300 a month on fuel driving to and from Sunset and Newberg every day. And so I decided to find an old Mercedes that I could switch over and convert it to run on and use vegetable oil for free. I pick up the oil from a couple of different restaurants, which was actually like the hardest part, was to find restaurants that would give you the oil. Because normally restaurants are used to you coming in and ordering like whatever it is they sell, like their food, like the number, you know, five meal or the, you know, the burrito or whatever. And so I went into a bunch of different restaurants and said, well, I want, I'd love to be able to take your used oil and they kind of wouldn't quite understand what I was talking about. But when I finally explained it, um, they were like, oh, okay, well, we know we already have somebody that does it. I finally found a couple of places. So I pick up from Mazatlan here, just by my school. And then I pick up from a place outside of Newburn in Dundee called the Dundee Bistro. So those are the two places. I used to pick up from some more places, but they've gone out of business or whatever. But these two now, they give me plenty of oil. So I've actually got extra sitting in my driveway at home that I kind of have too much. To, I still need to take some road trips or something so I can so I can burn it all off. So I get it in like these giant uh, five gallon jug things. And so what I've done is I've actually bought some jeans at the thrift store and I just tie the, the legs off and I hang them up from like the ceiling in the garage and I just stand there and I pour five gallons of oil into these jeans and then it just gravity filters through a couple of pairs of these jeans into a 55 gallon steel drum. And then I crank and I pump this stuff into another drum which has some more filters and then then I pump it with an electric pump into my into my car. So just last night I I backed my I was out of fuel so I backed my car up and turned the little pump on a couple minutes, filled it up. So driving for free again. So it cost me about five hundred dollars like for all the stuff. That's that's like all I had to spend. So like for coolant hoses, the heat exchanger, fuel hoses, a couple of switching valves, and making a little tank for diesel, because I start the car on diesel and then run it on vegetable oil and then switch it back to diesel at the end of the trip. And so all that all told is about 500 bucks. So it wasn't even very expensive for me to do. The, the engine starts a lot better on diesel, like the it sprays better coming out of the injectors. Um, and the vegetable oil will only spray well once it's, once it's hot. So I start the engine on the diesel because it starts fine. And then after like a mile or two, once the engine is up to, up to temperature, I'll switch it and then it'll run on the vegetable oil because it's running through a heater. Like it's a flat plate heat exchanger where hot coolant is running through and the oil is running through uh, on the other side of a piece of metal. And so it warms it up. And so then it's running that as the fuel while the engine is warm. And then I switch it back to diesel to purge the lines. So that way the next time you start it, like the next morning or something, it'll, it'll still start just fine. Yeah, so it turns out I've done it three times. So the first time I did my, my blue station wagon, there's a Mercedes 300 TD. That was like a compromised purchase. So what I really wanted at the beginning was like an SUV to run so that it would get fine fuel economy, but I wouldn't have to pay like the super expensive gas or diesel to, to fill it up. So I ended up finding a Mercedes G wagon. So it was a 300 GD. So it was a diesel, um, diesel motor, like 1981. It's like white, it's like a giant white box. But it was super fun because, you know, I could like drive anywhere with it, but then it was also diesel so I could convert it to vegetable oil. So for that one, my dad and I like custom made a fuel tank to put in the back. 
for the diesel and the whole thing. So I sold that one because it had a bunch of rust and stuff. And so then I bought a, a Land Cruiser. So now my Land Cruiser has a diesel engine and it can run vegetable oil too. There's like a, a group of people that like are super into running their cars on like alternate fuels. Um, some people will make their own biodiesel and so they'll be mixing like methanol or other pretty explosive chemicals in it like in the garage and actually some people have like blown up their house or started their garage on fire by doing all this stuff which that seemed like kind of over the top for me so I just filter it and run it straight it's called like straight vegetable oil or waste vegetable oil. I didn't start doing it for the environmental benefits but there actually there are some tangible benefits to doing it so I drive 45 miles or so a day back and forth from my house. And so that's a lot of fuel that I burn. And so if it's gasoline or diesel, then that's um, the carbon that's stored like in the carbon cycle deep in the earth is called sequestered carbon, which then when we burn it in our cars or in our homes or whatever, we release it to the atmosphere and then it's part of the cycle again. But it hasn't been for like millions of years or whatever. And so what I'm doing is actually burning, it's not carbon zero, but it's carbon neutral. So like the solar power would be like zero carbon. Mine is neutral, and so it's already carbon that's in the biosphere. So it's like from plants and stuff like that. So they burn, they grow the canola, so they grow the sunflower oil, or they grow whatever. And so, so that carbon has already kind of been in the cycle. So I'm not adding any new carbon, but it's not like carbon zero. I'd love to have like a, a solar electric car that I could power up with solar panels on my house or something, but that's, you know, that may be still a few years away for that project. My dad has an old Mercedes that he bought because he liked how mine looked and he liked that it was last forever. Mine's got like 370,000 miles on it. And so I'm trying to get him to convert his car over. We just got to find the, find the time to do it. But like I was saying, I'd, I'd love to actually um, make a solar electric car sometime, but, but that's, that's a whole lot of work. At this point, I've got all our, our cars at home converted over. So I don't have much work to do on that part. But. But if other people want their cars done, you know, it's fun to help a friend out or something like that.